So, let's talk about Joker fully ado, or as I'm going to call it, Joker 2, because I ain't no fucking Frenchman, and I'm not going to keep saying fully ado, because I'm probably going to fuck that up multiple times. My dyslexic ass cannot handle that word, okay? That's a little too much for my vocabulary, all right? So... We just going to not say that. We're just going to call it Joker 2. If you have not seen Joker 2, please go watch the movie. I don't know why you would want to watch the movie. And that's just going to give you a hint of how I feel about the movie. But if you want to put yourself through that fucking um, slander, that film, by all means go. Everyone takes different things out of film. And if you want to just go and figure out what, what you feel about the movie, go right ahead. I'll wait. But for everybody else, I just want to sit there and say, there's a scene where Arthur, after getting assaulted, the next scene he comes and he's about to give this speech to the jurors. So we find out the verdict and he looks at the camera, looks at the TV camera and he just gives this look of defeat and anguish in his eyes. And I was just sitting there after the film was over for like a good 10 minutes. And I felt the same way Arthur felt at that moment. Just defeated, tired, and most importantly, I just felt like this was a cruel joke. This whole film felt like a cruel joke. And what do I mean by that? And the only way I can explain how this movie made me feel like it was a cruel joke is that I have to explain Joker 1 and why I love Joker 1. Joker 1 was everything I love about DC. When people clown on DC and say DC's trash or DC's awful, I always use Joker as an example of what DC can be and what they should strive to be. Joker 1 plays with the um, themes, informatics, and the, the, the Batman IP, but also has something very meaningful to say about Batman and his Rose Gallery, in particular Joker, but also finds a way to tie it into real life in a very poignant and very profound way that even though it does copy from the greats, even though the movie is not flawless, the movie is so well done and well made. I couldn't help but applaud Tom Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix for what they've done and the whole team of Joker for what they've done. Um, the movie generally had something to say. And I think what, what really hit me is what it really had to say about us as a society and how we as people lack empathy towards one another, especially towards those who have mental illness. We have such a lack of heart nowadays that we make a great people like the Joker. And it's only a matter of time before we get a Joker that will bring anarchy and pain to a particular city or a world or whatever. I thought that was poignant. I thought that was profound. And it was all coming from a fucking comic book movie. To just have Arthur sit there at the third act of the first movie, go on this rant about how people are uncivilized and how people will see people like Arthur and will walk all over him, but lead that to any other person. They would praise and talk about them, but the little people, they would get walked over. And I thought that was so profound. I thought that was genius for Tom Phillips to, to say that with the character of Joker. But also, 
throughout the whole film remind you that Joker is not a good person. But does it so clever by having the movie be ambiguous. All of act, all the actions that Arthur does is left ambiguous or leaves you pondering, was that the right call? And because of that, so much people gravitated to this interpretation of Joker. Because he, he made you feel like he was one of us. You understand and can sympathize where he was coming from. Anybody who's ever felt like the world had just gone to shit, especially if you live in the New York area, it's the most unsympathetic fucking place you'll ever meet. All right. And I live in New York. But anybody who's even lived here will tell you we lack compassion. So for the movie to bring that up and talk about that was fucking genius. And it spoke to people. It spoke to people. This interpretation of Joker spoke to many people. And that is why, to me, Joker made a billion dollars. Because unintentionally, or whether it was intentional or not, that Joker, this interpretation of Joker, Joaquin Phoenix interpretation of Joker, spoke to the people. It was profound and it was great. Not only that, but it did a great job of tying into the, the the lore the playing with the mythos the batman mythos so poignant that you didn't even realize what if you didn't even care about the message you could just look at what it said about batman as a character why he doesn't kill his his villains is because he generally has sympathy not only for them but for gotham as a whole because he's the only one that can give them sympathy. And I'm like, wow, Tom Phillips, you're, you're a fucking genius, bro. Like, this man gets it. This man's a genius. And there's a reason why the Joker got a billion dollars, Joaquin Phoenix won an Oscar, and I'm like, this is great. And, it, and the cool part is, is it was a one and done. We all know what was going to be the fate and the outcome of Arthur. Because he descended into madness, because we, we, as a society have failed him. There's only two options left. He's either going to stay in jail or in Arkham for the rest of his life, or he's going to get the death penalty or he's going to die. Those were Arthur's two things that was going to happen to him because we as a society has failed him. So instead of ending that, of course, Warner Brothers, and I'm going to also say Tom Phillips decided, let's make a sequel. And instead of doing the noble thing, which was, I'm bowing out, I don't have anything to say, I told the story I wanted to tell of this interpretation of Joker. Let me bow out. Tom Phillips decided to say, Anybody who genuinely rooted or understood Arthur Flint is fucking idiots, are dumb, and I'm making this film to not only tell you that you're dumb and you should never sympathize with this fucker, but I'm going to make sure that you understand that Joker is the fucking villain. Now, I felt that was the wrongest move to make for Tom Phillips. I thought Tom Phillips already said that in the, in the last film. I felt like by the third act, when he shoots Murray, it was very clear what we were not supposed to do. We're not supposed to praise Arthur for his actions. We can understand it. We can understand his frustration, which is why a lot of people gravitated towards the character, which is why a lot of people felt they could see themselves in Arthur. But we don't condone Arthur's action. To use another comic book villain as an example would be 
Killmonger from Black Panther. And that movie, a lot of people, especially if you grew up in the fucking hood and you're black, can all relate to Killmonger and what he was saying and everything he was saying in that movie. We all could relate. Hell, I know there's black people in the hood right now that talks like Killmonger. We all have been and have felt that rage, that black rage that a lot of black men and women have. We all been there as a black community. We all been there so we can understand where Killmonger was talking about. However, I guarantee you ask anybody, they would all say, including myself, would say, we do not condone Killmonger's actions. Why? Because what Killmonger was proposing was genocide and would have led to the destruction of Wakanda. We do not condone that motherfucker. We get where he's coming from. Trust me, we do. But we did not condone it. So for Phil to come and make this film the same shit, but now is more cynical, more darker, and just more pointless and more regurgitation of what we had in the last film is completely a waste of fucking time and why I'm so angry with this film. Let me first start off by saying I do not like how they handled Arthur in this film. I don't like they took Arthur's character development from where he's left off at the end of Joker 1 to where he's at at Joker 2. Now granted, maybe that's because he's been taking pills and whatnot. So, you know, the Joker aspect of his character is toned down. But that's not the route they should have went with. Throughout the whole movie until one court scene is where he fully embraces his um, his Joker persona. The whole movie, and I've said this, which I think it was a bad idea to even do a sequel. If you're going to do a sequel to this movie, the main thing this sequel should have been is... Asking the question, what happens when you give someone who is mentally unstable and someone who has lost their way a loaded gun? And the loaded gun is his followers, aka Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is a is is the amalgamation of his followers, basically encouraging this chaotic version of himself. And the theme should have been, or the whole movie should have him should have been him descending into madness but throughout the course of the film him meeting people and having people that genuinely care about him not Harley but other people reminding Arthur that no what you did was wrong and that no you had people that genuinely cared and loved for you in other words if Joker 1 was about how we as a society has a lack of empathy towards people, Joker 2 should have been the counter argument that no, there are good people out there that generally have empathy and generally care about one another, care about mental illness and whatnot. And that if you look through things with a very cynical eyes, you will receive nothing but grief and anguish and a bad viewpoint on life and there's one scene that sort of hints at that when he talks to to the little person he has one great scene with him that i would generally say had me emotional because it was generally that good because it was sad to see Arthur go down this route and it was so good to have a character remind Arthur of his humanity only for this movie to say fuck that let's go back and regress 
Arthur as a character instead of uplifting him. And so when they try to do a uplifting moment where he finally reckon he announced denounced the the Joker mantle, I don't feel like that shit was earned at all. I'm like what happened to the the Arthur by the end of Joker 1 to make him realize that this route that he's going is fucking bad. I don't feel like there, there was enough shit that happened that made him turn to the good side or go back and say, no, I am Arthur. This is who I want to be. The whole Joker ideology is fucking stupid. There's nothing in the film. It just felt like Tom Phillips basically said, I don't fucking like that you guys like this Joker. So I'm just going to pull up a bull, a, a big stupid reason. a pull bullshit out my ass to say no. Fuck you fans and fuck anybody who actually likes this interpretation. Anybody who can sympathize with this, with this interpretation of Arthur not only is fucking losers they're dummies they're idiots they're morons i can't believe it i can't believe what the fuck i was watching i i was generally upset like i I was generally upset at what tom was saying bro to us the audience i i couldn't believe it as someone who genuinely loved the first movie i couldn't believe it and then the musical numbers. Now, me personally, I don't even think the musical numbers are bad. I think they're fine. However, there's clear mishaps. First of all, if you're going to do musical numbers, let me first start off by saying you have, at least in my humble opinion, they should be original scores, not scores from or or actual like licensed music just being um sung by the actors you have lady gaga which i'm gonna get into in a little bit you have lady gaga you should have this fucking girl be writing four five six different songs for the joker again the whole musical aspect could have worked People saying that's the worst part of the film. No, that part is actually not even that bad. Because it actually gives you an idea of what's going on in Arthur's mind. However, not only is it licensed, but some of the pacing of it, how it leads in, is so horrible. Like, out of nowhere, we're having these deep conversations about Arthur and how much he's a piece of shit and he's garbage and whatever, making his man out to be a piece of shit, which is wild to me but whatever not saying i condone his actions but the way how the movie pitch it picks it it's like really fucking like he's a piece of shit instead of us using those musical numbers to transition on what arthur is feeling half of the time we just get random transition into fucking uh a music number and i'm like what the fuck and we have to wait two to three minutes just to get back to a conversation or we just move on and cut to a new scene. And I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing, Tom? Again, like the idea of doing musical numbers for Joker makes sense. Fucking Joker in the animated cartoon had tons of musical numbers, tons of musical moments. That's fine. I think it fits him. And... It also makes sense because you have fucking Lady Gaga, which is another thing. This Harley Quinn is so underutilized. Everyone's been saying it, but I'm actually kind of upset. I'm not even a huge Lady Gaga fan. All right. I like Lady Gaga, but she's not my favorite. She's not my favorite musician. But one thing I will say about Lady Gaga is that she can damn well act. She can act her ass off. All right, I've been very impressed by her ever since I watched um, *Star Is Born*. I also saw her in *American Horror Story*. Those few episodes, she's really damn good. 
So for her to come in and play such an iconic character like Harley Quinn, Harley Quinzel, is an honor, all right? To add her own flair and charm, her own interpretation of the character would have been amazing if the movie had let her have more scenes to act <laughs> instead of her just being a fucking singer. When they cast her, I was like, fuck yeah, she's gonna kill it as Harley Quinn. But the Harley Quinn we got in this fucking movie is barely anything. It's bare bones. Only thing we know is that this Harley Quinn is rich and she's manipulating the joker the manipulating joker part or arthur makes sense it's cool that idea is actually the reverse of their relationship in the comics where joker was always manipulating harley into doing shit and never really cared about her having that be for arthur and she's the one that manipulating arthur to feed into the you need to be the joker be the joker be this 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 side of you is what i love almost like kind of like the spider-man thing where black cat kind of likes in some interpretation she only likes the spider-man persona not the peter parker persona i was like that's fucking genius all right that's genius and it even makes sense considering the fact that we're talking about arthur always wanted to find love and what happens when you find love through someone who doesn't have the the right intentions for you? It leads you down an even darker fucking path. And I genuinely like that idea. The problem is they don't fucking explore that enough. Or even do enough with Lady Gaga's character. So for me, Lady Gaga was a waste of fucking time. The only good thing she's done in this fucking film was literally the music anytime she would sing she's the fucking highlight she's the best part and there's one musical number between uh her and joaquin phoenix joker where i generally was like this is so fucking sweet like i like genuinely this is so sweet that the way how arthur's looking at her it's so much love and affection. I was like, man, like, this is the way how Arthur's looking at, at, at fucking Harley. I'm like, bro, like, this is what every guy want to look at their girl. All right. Like, genuinely in love. Cause she gets it, quote unquote. It's not real love, but you know, for Arthur, it's real. And I just wish we had spent more time with this Harley Quinn, got to see her world. Her manipulating him is a cool idea, but we didn't get enough to understand this Harley, her world, what she really wants, what what it, what is her, what's her end game besides building a fucking mountain? None of that, none of that. And to me, you taking one of the most iconic DC characters, uh, DC heroine, like Harley Quinn, and I'm mounting her into practically nothing is it's really upsetting, especially since this is a waste of time for Lady Gaga. It's just annoying to see this, you know, very annoying. You know, say what you want about Birds of Prey and how that movie turned out. But at least that felt like a really good Harley Quinn uh, show, you know, or episode or a comic book, a really fun Harley Quinn adventure and a good interpretation of Harley Quinn. I don't know what the fuck to make with this Harley. And it's such a shame because Lady Gaga could have been a good Harley. And then the ending of this fucking film. Oh, Lord, the ending of this film. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I am so blown away that Warner Brothers allowed this ending. I, I gotta be honest, I was shocked who allowed this shit, who allowed this man to cook? Because this ending is ass. And I'm not saying it in, it's ass in the, we shouldn't have killed off Arthur, Arthur. No, the truth of the matter is, 
there was only two outcomes for Arthur. He was going to live his life in prison or he was going to get the death penalty or die. I'm not even mad that he fucking died. It's how he died I was mad about. To have it be some random fucking creepy ass fucking like cult that really loved Joker but killed him because he rejected the Joker persona and killed him. And he was in one scene where he was smiling, which I already knew he was going to come back into play because that was heavily foreshadowed. I was like, you're going to come back into play somehow near the end of this fucking film, aren't you? For him to come in, kill, kill Arthur, and then cut his, use the, the, the knife that he killed Arthur with and slice his face and make the Joker smile almost like like fucking Heath Ledger's Joker is such a fucking disrespectful thing to do for um, Heath Ledger's take of the character. Oh my goodness. I'm like, what the fuck is this dumb shit? All right. I fucking couldn't stand that. I was like, so what the fuck was the point of this? I was like, and implying that, well, Arthur was never the real Joker. This guy is the real Joker. Ho, 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 ho. He, he, he was never the real Joker. We were just following a mentally ill person. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, Tom? Tom, what the fuck are you talking about? All right, bro. Are you fucking stupid? No, 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 like, no, no. If anything, what I didn't like about that ending was one it removed all the subtlety of the first movie and that's the whole this my biggest issue with this movie as a whole all the subtlety and all the all the unanswered questions or a lot of the implied get answered and they're so unsatisfying there's shit that we already as fans were coming up with and theorizing for a while so it's kind of like why are you why are you filling out the answers that we didn't ask for? It, it kind of reminded me to use a video game as an example, Last of Us, where it's like Last of Us Part 2, because they made a sequel, they have to now address certain answers. And depending on how you answer those qu questions, people are going to love it or hate it. And for the most part, for me with this movie, I fucking hated the answers they gave or very lack thereof answers because a lot of the answers are just kind of like no fucking brainers. But, you know, at least with the ending, I was expecting Harley was going to come and kill um, Arthur because it would make sense. I, You sold me on this premise of you, Arthur. That you were going to be the Joker. You sold me on this premise. Now all of a sudden you have backed away from this. And now you're rejecting this. You're rejecting what you stood for. What you meant to us. No, fuck you. You do not get to love me. And for that, I'm going to kill you. And that would have been. That would have made more poignant sense. That she takes over as the Joker. The mantle of the Joker. Because she's just as insane, insane. Even more insane. Because she's able to get through security and shit. And, and Gotham and what I mean. And uh, fucking Arkham and shit. And Gotham and whatnot. So it, it, it would make sense to have her be the fucking killer. I mean, the one that killed him. Instead, the movie says fuck that. <laughs> fuck all that bullshit. He just dies for some random small Joe. And it's like, okay, no, fuck this. So I don't got much to say on this. And I'm sorry if this video came off more of as a rant, but I'll say this and I'm going to just wrap up the fucking video. Joker fully ado. 
is generally a terrible, cynical, and cruel joke. It takes everything you love about the first movie, everything it had to say about mental illness and how we as a society treat people with uh look down upon or the lack of empathy we have for for people and basically says anybody who liked the character of arthur anybody who thought he was the joker or anybody who looked up to him or sympathized with what he was saying was fucking stupid you're all stupid and you should feel stupid i'm going to take this character and completely fucking humiliate him all for a sick joke because I didn't want to fucking do the sequel. And I'm getting so sick and tired of these directors, whether it be the Matrix 4 directors, uh, the Wachowski sisters, uh, the fucking all these people, these directors who come back to these iconic movies and say, I hate it, so I'm going to fucking piss on it and I'm going to hurt. I'm going to hurt the film, uh, the studio in the process. But in in the process of hurting the studio, I'm going to shit on the fans as well. No, Tom Phillips, that is not cool. And fuck you for that. Seriously, fuck you for that. I don't like this movie. I think it's a very cruel movie. Is it the worst movie I probably see this year? Maybe not, but for me, as someone who loves the first movie, this is the worst movie of the of the year. Because it completely ruins the first movie, in my humble opinion. And I'm completely done with this shit. I never want to talk about it. I don't want to go on a huge fucking, like, discussion about this movie. And hearing people say, oh, well, actually, you just didn't get the movie. Or, I don't give a fuck all right we moving on fuck that noise i'm done with all that being said that's gonna do it for my video if you're new to the channel please comment rate subscribe all that fun stuff let me know matter of fact don't even let me know if you like the joker too good for you i really don't give a fuck about this film it will go and it'll be erased out of my fucking mind. And we're just going to move on from this. Because I have nothing nice to say. With all that fun stuff. Please comment, rate, subscribe. All that fun stuff. Until next time. Stay safe and have a good one. I'll see you in the next video. And fuck you Tom Phillips. And fuck you Warner Brothers for even okaying this shit.